When I first saw De Antonio Yachts at the uh, Southampton Boat Show in 2017, I remember thinking what an ingenious bunch of people they were in terms of the way they approached uh, the needs of the day boater. And in 2023 at the Cam Boat Show, it's clear that nothing has changed. Certainly they build bigger boats than they used to. The smallest boat is now the 28. There's also the new D36, there's a 42, and the 50 is the biggest boat that they do. That's the flagship. But as we step on board, it becomes very clear that that ingenuity I saw in 2017 remains very much intact. Now, we step onto the aft platform. It hasn't been here, but this could be spec'd as a high-low platform if you wish. And you're greeted by an elevated sunbed, a very large one, nicely contoured. And the reason for this is that this is an outboard powered boat, not an inboard powered boat, not a stern drive. So the outboards, twin outboards are tucked under there. And so too, is a very neat little device in here, a tender garage. So we lift that up, you've got a two meter tender in there, plus a little charging point down here to charge up your little electric outboard. And if we come down here, we'll see buttons that enable us to lift this off some bed so that you see exactly what we have down inside there. Now, as you can see, what we have in here is a pair of Mercury Verado 400s. That's the maximum option for this boat. You can have 300s or 350s, and apparently the 300s are good for 45 knots, and these good for 50 knots and more if you want to prop them to achieve that. Now, the thing with outboards is that De Antonio has always wanted to use them because they're low maintenance, they're clean, they're very high performance. You can get the uh, running gear, the props, right out of the water. Uh, so they're easier to service and to maintain. But of course, one of the chief downsides of outboard engines on a sports boat is that you put in a lot of weight aft. Now, if you're covering them up with this beautiful stern structure, that as you can see, extends a good way aft of the actual transom, you're adding additional weight aft, which of course threatens to spoil the running dynamics of the boat. So what De Antonio has done to arrest that is extend, as you can see, the hull on both sides aft of that phantom, right beyond the level of the props when they're dipped in the water on both sides. So it gives it a kind of catamaran stability that you aft end, acting like natural trim tabs. And at the same time, it gives it buoyancy at the aft end to counteract that additional weight of those engines and of this structure. So that's a clever solution. On the face of it, you would also expect that to kind of cause this boat by lifting the stern to dip the bow and to cause it to run relatively flat and to be a little bit resistant to trim. But uh, we'll have to find out whether that's the case when we drive it a little later on. The caps for the waste, the water and the fuel are neatly recessed into a little alcove in the starboard bulwark and as we move forward you'll see that the head of that aft sunbed is a large dedicated seating and dining area. I call it a dedicated seating and dining area because this table doesn't drop into there. As you can see they're not telescopic, they're fixed. It doesn't drop into there to create an extra sunbed and there's no reason really why it should. Um, you've already got a sunbed aft as you can see and if you look forward we've got an additional sunbed up in the bow so if you were to eradicate this as a seating unit that's the only real seating unit in the entire boat but it's a spectacular one so you don't really want to get rid of it it's big enough for perhaps one two three four five six six to eight people and a clever little touch is that in this galley this wet bar stroke galley just ahead of that uh, dining area. We've got a little cool box tucked into here that you can pull out. You can lift up this lid, pull out that cushion, pop the lid back on. The other way, of course, because I've just put the poppers down, but you can see the principle and that creates a nice little bench you can put anywhere on the boat. You can even carry that off and uh, pop it on the beach for the afternoon, filled with ice and beer. And it uh, adds another couple of seats to this dining section. So that's a really lovely touch. It's really nicely styled too, actually. 
And before I look at that galley further, I want to look at a couple of other neat little touches that you got on board this boat. As I say, they're a very clever designer. They always have been, and that's very much in evidence here. If we look down to the side here, the grab rails are not elevated up on top. They're inset into their own little uh, sort of trough, but they're very easy to grab hold of. They're well spaced. It just looks very slick, very cool. And as we move forward, you can see we've got rectangular foam fenders. And obviously they're not as bulbous as uh, cylindrical ones, so they don't steal your space. They're very easy to stow. You can fit three in here and they absolutely don't jut out and block the walkway in any way. They're very good indeed. The sunken cleats themselves are rather lovely too. And that beautiful insignia machined into the top there. And we also have a nice little touch to stop you wearing away the edge of your fiberglass when you've got lines running out over there. The finer details of this seating unit are good too. We've got four really attractive drained cup holders built into this tabletop. It's high quality, the uh, execution really is very good. And then in the seat bases themselves, the storage is good too. You don't have to lift up cushions and mess around with lids, which can get a bit uh, sweaty and fussy and annoying when it's hot. Uh, you've got simple doors at the base here that you open up so you can access nice big square regions of storage inside. We've got one in the leading edge of each seat unit there, as you can tell. Then we also have transverse ones at the side too. That one's full of stuff, but you see the point. So the seat base is very well used. And then in the center, we have a lift up lid and access to a hatch down there that gives you access to your various uh, mechanical spaces, your tanks uh, and batteries and so on. Moving forward to the bow, we have to nip up a little step, which presumably creates a little extra volume down below. There are no gunnel top guardrails, but it's uh, nice and deep and the walkways are pretty broad. The deck's nice and grippy, feels good underfoot. And we see an additional sunbathing unit, again with contoured headrests, big enough for perhaps uh, three people, or maybe two adults and a couple of kids at a push. Uh, we have a couple of cup holders machined into these uh, stainless steel uh, fittings on either side of that sunbed. If we look under here, there's a cushion that comes out independently. Now you kind of expect a, uh, a hatch there to admit light down below and to get your gear down below if you want to chuck it through from the uh, foredeck. But there isn't one. The guys who uh, designed this boat believe there's enough light in terms of the hull windows, enough views in terms of the hull windows down below. So they decided not to go with a hatch, but the cushion is there in case you insist upon it, which I probably would. So it's an easy fix. If we move further forward, we see we've got a very useful walk around design. It's very popular these days and rightly so. It's arguably the most practical kind of uh, configuration for a day boat. And we have the anchor locker, which again is really beautifully done. Let me get my shadow out of the way so you can see that. D36 in raised mouldings on that, that lid. It's a very pretty thing. Again, we've got these lovely sunken cleats, heavyweight stuff, and a strip to protect your fiberglass. And it's practical too. It's neatly arranged. Everything as ever you would have it. There's plenty of space for as much line and chain as you want. Up at the helm itself, we've got three fixed forward facing seats. I say fixed actually. Uh, the two co pilot seats are fixed, but the skipper seat, as you can see, is dropped down into a, a little recess, or rather, I should say, elevated from a recessed piece of uh, fiberglass moulding there where it gives you enough space that you can use uh, this little trigger for fore and aft adjustment and there's a decent space behind as you can see to adjust that to your body shape even though it's built into the uh, galley unit so 
so that's a really nice touch and not one I expected to be honest on a boat of this uh, kind of scale and for this sort of application you rarely see it the seats themselves are lovely with very good lateral support and at the helm itself we have a couple of 12 inch Simrad plotters but what's particularly interesting here is the fact that they've been collaborating De Antonio and Simrad so that this feels much more like a bespoke De Antonio system rather than just a, an impersonal industrial Simrad one. As you can see it's got the De Antonio Yachts logo there if we hit the home button it feels much more like you're in a car when you turn the uh, ignition on and you see the branding and you see your particular boat. It's a very nice touch. We've got basic details down the side but what they want to do with this is make uh, the kind of input of data much cleaner, much easier, much more intuitive and they've done that if I hit the status button there. Now this I like a lot. We've got black water fresh water tank with percentages we've got the fuel tank up there with liters and percent uh, as well as the uh, health of your batteries you've got the various other uh, parameters uh, down the side navigational parameters uh, but what i really like is this the fact that it not only shows you the uh, state of your tanks but also their location within the boat which is, is just a quite a nice touch here's the uh, main fuel tanks, there's the water tank and then the black water tank for the heads compartment down below as we'll see in a bit. And then if you hit the drive button, there you are, kind of semi-analog, semi-digital display that's very nicely judged. It gives you everything you want straight away. Now as you can see this is very clearly a day boat. With its seating areas and its sunbathing areas, it does a great job of providing all the day boating facilities you need on a relatively compact platform. So what's really surprising and really welcome is the attention they've paid to the spaces down below. Now, starting with the slightly prosaic stuff, we've got the uh, switch panel on the port side. A neat little push button cover to hide your battery switches and little cubby hole for extras down below and then you have a, a seating section a kind of lounge area which looks very attractive it's quite spacious and it's kind of wrap around C shape so it's quite sociable too and if we move forward you see what appears to be a really tiny permanent double and you think well what is the point in that and it's a perfectly good question it's a question I asked them I thought perhaps it was just a, a fairly mean space for you to stow your kids when you're up top having uh, some fun but if you look down here there's a little button that enables you to elevate the forward most bench seat and it pops up into place locks into place so even if you uh, uh, your power fails it, it won't just plummet and that turns it into a proper size of double bed so if you fancy staying for a long weekend, you can do that. We also have, just here, a separate heads compartment with a shower fitting, as you can see, so you can use it as a wet room. And they've even managed, if we look aft, to fit a little mid cabin in here. I say a little mid cabin, it's actually much more generous than I make it sound. You see these curves, they've used the actual uh, depths of the hole bottom to really make this work. Uh, and the cockpit's relatively elevated to give you this space. And there's so much space in fact, that you can sit yourself around this area. You can fit a table in here if you like. I mean, there's not one spec on this boat, but you, you certainly could. And there's room to sit in here as a six footer without banging your head on the ceiling. There's a little fridge so you don't have to nip up the top into the main deck wet bar to serve yourself drinks. And then if you want to use this area as a bed, it could not be easier. You simply reach forward, grab the sliding panel, shunt that back, and then you've got infill cushions. You simply take one from here and another from here on the other side, slot them into space 
and what you have instantly is a really good double bed to supplement the double you have in the forward space. And all this is achieved without having to mess around. I know lots of people who kind of refuse to go cruising on a boat where you've got to convert the bed. They want a permanent bed for ease of use. Well, this is virtually that. I mean, it takes a matter of five seconds to sort out this bed and a matter of five seconds to sort out the bed in the bow. So it's extremely impressive, it really is. And the lighting is also lovely, I've got to say. As you see, it's currently pink, this kind of ambient mood lighting. But if we come over here to the back of the switch panel, this little device allows you to pick any colour you want. Okay, we're out on the water now. It's pretty soft water as you tend to get off can early in the morning. It will kick off later on, I don't doubt. I think we've got a bit of a storm coming. Uh, but sitting at the helm of this uh, D36, it's a, a very comfortable place to be. These are lovely kind of offshore seats with nice lateral supports and bolsters. We've got a couple of foot braces down below me as well. One built into the seating unit itself and another built into the helm console, which gives you a very comfortable um, kind of action driving position. And there's a uh, good visibility too. On this model at the show, we've got the hard top uh, with a kind of screen that comes part way up. You can have that screen go right up to the hard top and you can also have a kind of soft top version as well. Um, but we've just been for a, a blast in this and it gives you uh, an ideal kind of blend between visibility all round and also good protection from the elements. But for now, what we need to do, I think, is get ourselves up and running and uh, see how she goes. Now, as I say, with this boat, with this boat, we've got a pair of uh, Mercury 400 outboards on the transom. Now you can have 300s or 350s. Apparently with the 300s this boat is good for uh, around about 45 knots which is pretty impressive. With these 400s they've kind of been a little bit uh, under propped, relatively uh, low pitch, around about 19. So uh, it's revving high to sort of 6.5, 6.8 but we're getting the best part of 50 knots out of it. That's what they wanted. They didn't want it to go too far beyond that because this is a family day boat. It's a, a fun boat, not a, a high, a hard edge kind of performance machine. So if we get her up onto the plane, give her a little bit of trim. I mean, that, that happens flat and it happens pretty much instant. There's virtually no bow rise. And that's quite an interesting feature of this boat actually, because with those kind of hull extensions aft, it gives it that extra little bit of aft buoyancy and kind of keeps your nose pinned a little bit. So it runs very flat. And although we've got the zip wake system running here, um, to counteract the beam wind. We really don't need that too much. We've got a few wakes coming through, as you can see. But we really don't need that in terms of our lateral stability because those aft hull mouldings that extend on either side of the uh, outboard engines, they kind of keep it running fairly flat um, even when you're in a beam wind, or even when you've got people moving about on the boat. So they kind of act like uh, trim tabs in their own regard. So we just put on a bit of pace, trim her in and swing around to starboard. Uh, there's plenty of grunt there, plenty of grip, and that nose stays nice and low. Sit myself down here now and take it a little bit more easy. Yeah, that wind blast is flowing straight over my head now. There's not too much noise. I mean, sometimes with these uh, kind of techniques whereby you box in the engines, it, it paradoxically seems to amplify that noise. Um, but that's not the case here, even though we've got a hard top, the noise readings we've been getting have been perfectly decent for a, a kind of open uh, sports boat. And I have to say these seats are very, very comfortable too. We do have forward and aft adjustability here, which is handy. And because of this walk around configuration, there's no problem with me being here, driving the boat and people making their way around unencumbered from the bow to the stern. It's certainly a lot of fun. And, you know, for a, a day boat, which is principally designed for families to come out and enjoy themselves, to have relaxed lunch, to have a sunbathe on the stern or a sunbathe on the bow, do a bit of swimming, have some water sports, 50 knots is ample. So yeah, they could absolutely, they could fit props that would take this well beyond 50 knots. I don't doubt that at all. 
But here, in this form, with these twin 400s, what we have is a very capable performance boat that's very easy to enjoy. And yet, I'm inclined to think that if their inclinations towards the twin 300s is correct, and they can get 45 knots out of that boat, then it might actually be worth saving a little bit of cash and going with the, uh, the base option. Either way, it's a very entertaining boat to drive. It feels quite different to a lot of monohulls in that there's not a tremendous amount you can do with the, the, the trim of the boat. You can't particularly elevate that nose to surf down following seas, I don't think. We haven't had any of those to play with here today. But in most conditions, I think this is going to be a really satisfying, a really rewarding boat for uh, family users. I'm delighted to say that this new D'Antonio D36 Open is an absolute belter of a boat. It's every bit as clever, in fact cleverer than the boat I originally saw in 2017 and I was particularly enthusiastic about that. Uh, you've got this lovely central seating unit, a great galley, that portable cool box, you've got sunbathing stations fore and aft, you've got all the benefits of outboard propulsion but alongside the benefits of inboard propulsion. You don't see those engines, you get lots of extra space aft but there's no real dynamic compromise there because they've used those hull extensions to compensate for that extra weight at the stern. Yes, keen drivers might want a little bit more control over the pitch if they enjoy perhaps surfing down the seas and uh, getting amongst the rough stuff. But for everyone else, particularly for family boaters, this is going to be a very satisfying day boating solution. It can be yours for €320,000 plus VAT, or in this configuration for €350,000 plus VAT. But whichever configuration you choose, you can rest assured that this is undoubtedly one of the stars of this year's Cannes Yachting Festival.